Hello, hello, we are back. Hey guys, hope everybody is doing well. I am going to start off by quickly saying I'm super excited to do today's session because as most people know, security, not my area. You'd never, you'd never think of oh, security and stuff, uh, even though I've got a funky shirt on about it. I finally, your lack of security, I find your lack of security disturbing. This shirt I've had in the wardrobe for so long and I've finally got an excuse to wear it on Twitch, so I'm very happy. So we're gonna be talking about uh, WAF today, which I'm super excited. Uh, but before we get started, um, John, how's your day going? I mean, so far, so good, you know, uh, just happy to be on the show and, uh, you know, happy to be talking a little about, a, about a little bit of security today. <laughs> Love it. And Latha, where do we find you? Where are you based? Uh, I'm based out in Amsterdam. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. It's a beautiful city indeed, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, um, I've only been once, but I feel like it's on my list. Me and my friends are going to try and go. Uh, I've only been for work and I was literally there for like 24 hours, which happens a lot of the time. <laughs> so yeah, more, more sites to see. Uh, awesome. Okay, well, let's get into it. So welcome everyone to the Keys to AWS Optimization, the show where we share stories, concepts and solutions to help you unlock your spend at AWS. My name is Steph Gooch and I'm a senior optimization architect advocate in the optics team helping you guys save money. John? Yeah, and I'm John Massey. I work alongside Steph on the optics team as a principal optimization solutions architect. Um, and Latha, you want to give us a little bit of background uh, on yourself? Yeah, sure. So, hi, all. Uh, I'm Latha. I'm a technical account manager at AWS, and I'm based out in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, I'm also a subject matter ex expert from uh, the edge services of cloud and that I cover the perimeter protection of AWS services. So, yep, here to uh, share some knowledge I have uh, around that area and I'm very much excited, yeah. Yeah, and we, like I said, we are super excited to have you. Um, and the fact that you do this stuff, you're a TAM, so you're in there in the weeds with customers, you're an expert. And you came to me with this, which is, I also love. So as a general shout out, as always, any customers watching, any Amazon people watching, if you have an optimization story you want to come and share on the show, this has happened quite a few times now, email us at costoptimization at amazon.com and you can come on and tell your story. Uh, so just two housekeeping things before we go into our session. Number one, as always, we are now going to be having a summary at the end of every episode. So if you want the TLDR, you can check out the summary at the end of the episode that Richard writes. And it's always fun. I don't know what he's going to write. So I have to read that out. So that's always going to be exciting. And second thing, next week, we are moving to be an hour show. So we're going to start at the time we would normally end. So that's four o'clock GMT, uh, 11 o'clock uh, EST, eight o'clock PST, got the time differences. And then we're gonna be going for an hour. We're gonna be having different types of sessions, different types of uh, multiple parts. So make sure to note in your diary next week, the time is gonna change. Drop us a uh, question in the chat if you have any. Um, oh, someone's even asked a quick question. Is it possible to un to do AWS unoptimized? Uh, I mean, that's not our goal. We're trying to optimize all the time. So people do sometimes leave some money on the table, and that is what we're going to showcase today. Uh, but yeah, let's let's move that conversation onto our topic, which is. I, I was going to say though, Steph. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I think that's a great question for today's show. We, we've been talking a lot on the team um, for folks that were watching reInvent. You know, just uh, now I know we're in mid February, so two months back. If you watched. Um, Warner Vogel's keynote talk about the frugal architect. You know, one of the key callouts there that I think is very fitting for today's conversation is that you know architecting is always a series of trade-offs, right? So we're talking about optimizing for cost. Sometimes we've got more security considerations. How do we kind of balance and kind of handle all of those trade-offs? Um, so just just kind of wanted to weave that one in as it's been a uh, it's been a big topic of conversation lately, and uh, I think that's a great question, kind of a great call out around like you know level of optimization. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, let's get into the WAF side of it. So enlighten us and remind me, because I just did my SAA exam, but it's already gone out of my head. So what is WAF? What does it stand for? Give us some background. Yeah, uh, sure. So uh, uh, at a very uh, high level, AWS WAF, it stands for Web Application Firewall, uh, right? Uh, as the name itself tells, it uh, protects our web applications that is like sitting behind maybe your cloud trend or application load balancers and resources like that from common web exploits, maybe such as uh, SQL injection attacks or cross-site scripting or 
bad bots or even fraudulent activities and you know, things like that. Yep, that's a very high level. Uh, yeah, well, about what is WAF. And, and Latha, maybe a question there too for for folks. Like when we're talking about web applications, we're talking about you know APIs as well as you know traditional kind of web apps and web services written through a browser. Both of those is that. Uh, yes, actually, WAF is uh, WAF uh, supports both uh, APIs and your APIs could also like sit behind application API gateways. And yes, WAF supports both. Cool. So yeah, every, everything we got that, that's web facing, you know, folks yes. can take advantage of it. Cool. That's right. And so I know there's a diagram that I can maybe spin up on the screen now. Uh, do you want to run into a bit how it works, like logistics wise? Uh, yes, of course. So. Uh, that is just what, what uh, WAF is about, right? And how does it actually uh, work? So WAF itself has a construct in what we call as web ACL, web access control list. And within uh, web ACL, we configure you know, number of rules through which we strategize our defense to protect our web applications, which is, which is potentially vulnerable to uh, web exploit, what, whatsoever is there in the out on the internet, and each of these rules, like we r configure these rules one after the other, and even uh, we combine uh, but a certain set of rules to form rule groups, and when we associate this web ACL to our to protect our resources, all the requests that is hitting this uh, hitting our protected resource will be evaluated by our web ACLs one after the other, you know, rule by rule one after the other. And when a condition is met in a particular rule, it will uh, perform the action that we define for that particular rule. Maybe, uh, for example, we identify a request to be a legit request. We we know that uh, the request needs to be passed to our uh, backend uh, application. So we might de define the action uh, to allow. Okay, if the request has these kind of characteristics, we allow the request to our backend uh, server. Uh, similarly, some request might be identified to be malicious uh, by one of these rules. For those characteristics, maybe like we define the action to block uh, such kind of request. So uh, when this action such as like allow or block have been performed, the request uh, wouldn't be executed by further uh, rules in that particular web ACL. If not, it will still continue to be executed by the rules which is written after those particular uh, rules. And not to forget, uh, there are like other uh, rule actions as well, such as you know, uh, WAF provides us the capability uh, to pose uh, our end users with uh, things like uh, capture puzzles, so that they are able to identify themselves as um, human users, mm -hmm. or even silent challenges, so that the end client is able to identify itself to be a web uh, browser and not a bot. For such kind of actions, yeah, if the end user is able to successfully complete the challenge, uh, those requests will uh, pass through further rules. But if they're not able to uh, successfully solve those challenges, the rules uh, will block those requests at that particular point. So just to summarize, there are a set of uh, rules that we define in the web ACL to strategize our defense mechanism. and if that particular role is, uh, could either allow the request to the backend server or block it, identifying it to be malicious. If mm -hmm. not, like continue to, to execute all the rules which is there further uh, af written after that particular rule. Oh, makes sense. You just, I've, I've got a refresher now. I remember this is uh, this came from the exam, so I'm good. <laughs> awesome. So, okay, let's just move into how do we look at uh, the world of FinOps, the world of cost optimization. So just to touch on quickly, how is uh, WAF priced? That's a, a very good question because like everything like comes out of that topic, right? And we uh, when we see uh, WAF through the cost optimization lens, it all uh, boils down to 
rightly understand the pricing stru structure of WAF. So I mentioned that uh, there are uh, rule groups that we can uh, combine to uh, combine number of rules to uh, define certain uh, strategies. Uh, and like there are certain uh, rule groups which AWS uh, provides it creates and maintains such uh, rule groups to provide protection against common web exploits, maybe SQL injection and uh, things like that. And customers mm -hmm. could just enable and uh, use that, right? So there are certain set of uh, managed rule groups which are free and there are certain sets which are not. So to discuss, uh, to uh, provide uh, some clarity about pricing, I would say there are like two models. One would be the basic model which will actually uh, consist of uh, the pricing for your web ACL, the number of rules or rule groups within that web ACL, and even uh, the amount of requests that has been like processed by the web ACL. That is like the basic uh, model, I would say. And the rules or rule groups that you define, it is like the rule groups uh, which comes under this are like mostly the uh, AWS, what we call as free managed rule groups. There's also this another uh, model where AWS, uh, you, I mean, customers could utilize uh, the advanced threat uh, detection mechanisms of AWS to fight uh, against bot attacks or fraudulent attacks, which is like much more sophisticated, or the capture puzzles or challenge actions. Those come with additional uh, pricing. And that uh, will depend on uh, the volume of requests that it is uh, processing apart from uh, you know, the basic uh, model of WAF charge that I uh, mentioned earlier. Right. Um, so, a lot, lot of functionality there, right, Latha, with, um, with the WAF. Um, you, you mentioned a couple of things that I just kind of wanted to, to click into a little bit more. So you mentioned like the managed rules where some of those are free, some of those yep. are paid. And what would it be fair to say to folks, you know, maybe start by enabling those free rules. That's a good place to start. And then you can layer on the paid rules as kind of a, you know, sort of a cost control control strategy there. That's right. That's exactly right. That's, that's how like we need to strategize our, the ordering of the rules and rule groups within a web ACL so that well, by the time the volume of requests that would hit this paid additional paid rule groups such as bot control or fraud control we limit that uh, volume of request that that is hitting those uh, rules so a general guidance is like make use of all these uh, your free managed rule groups or your own custom rule rules that you would want to write or really like allow uh, your known good traffic or block the traffic which you already know known to be uh, bad and later on, you know, so that you uh, filter uh, the traffic and you uh, let the filter traffic uh, only to uh, pass through or uh, being evaluated by your bot control or fraud control. That's right. Okay. All right. Okay. That that makes sense. So it's kind of the ordering doesn't also isn't just like a security impact. It is a cost impact to it as well. So yeah. if you're watching and you're thinking, I need to go and optimize some security, I've seen this spend go and criticize, not criticize, go and review the rule order and see if it's actually valid. So we've got a couple of questions, a couple of shout outs I'm going to do just for Rob. WAF is fun to say. Uh, it sounds like <laughs> patching someone from Batman. Rob, always bringing the fun, um, which is funny. Uh, we've also had a second question, Rob. Um, Ari Pricing, do you still get WAF credits with oh savings bundles, he means, as a, a typo in his thing. Do you still get that? Yes, yes, it is still there. The CloudFront Savings Bundle still has the credits for uh, WAF. Yes, awesome. And then we have one more question from Meredith. Uh, where's it gone? Uh, uh, what are some things uh, you can use for the conditions? So she also put in, in a different comment, I assume obvious things like IP ranges, but what, for an example, for a public application, I don't want to limit where people can access it from. Uh, and wants to protect things. So, like, what, can you give us another good example of what kind of conditions you can use in WAF? Uh, yep. It uh, definitely depends on what kind of cyber attacks that you are aiming to uh, defend against. Uh, so, uh, say, for example, you want to uh, defend against things like DDoS attacks, then, uh, you know, you could put a rate limit rule saying, like, your application could accept 
uh, uh, so much of threshold of tra traffic, say for example, 2000, like just for an example, uh, 2000 uh, requests uh, per five minute uh, period. Uh, using such uh, kind of conditions would actually limit uh, the uh, volume of requests and like hence uh, protect your application from DDoS attacks. That's one of the example and like there's uh, there are like a lot many things that we can do. Uh, for example, SQL injection uh, attacks. You could use like AWS Manage Rule Group for uh, this. You could just enable the SQL injection one and uh, already have defense uh, for such kind of attacks. So cust there are like lot uh, already so many managed rule groups that customers could just enable uh, by using the AWS managed rule groups and already have protection for most of uh, the common web exploits which is already present in the on the internet today oh all right oh go on John. sorry I, now, now i have a question i'm a little curious too so so latha you're talking to you, you brought up that piece there around like controlling like the number of requests that's kind of coming in so we're talking about like waf requests volume that's a cost component that we have here to, to be aware of um Another side of this, and, and just because that question kind of came up around like CloudFront, um, I'm, I'm curious, you know, if, we, if, if we're looking at total request volume that we have for the application, are there architecture things that folks should be considerate of that can maybe help reduce that overall amount of inbound requests that even hit the WAF? Like, w would CloudFront be something that should be part of the architecture that, that, that might be another component of kind of like the overall design? Uh Actually, like uh, uh, there is a white paper across this, you know, to have this uh, best practice uh, around rightly uh, architecting CloudFront, uh, specifically um, our uh, uh, you know web applications uh, itself, and it's it's very we recommend very much to place CloudFront to protect your uh, web applications and hence actually. Like, uh, CloudFront actually, like there are uh, certain uh, characteristics or features within CloudFront wherein, like, we could define uh, or you know control the request flowing from certain geographic uh, areas. You could filter the request. Uh, maybe like you, your business is running only in a, a specific country, or so you accept the request originating only from specific country. So that th those kind of features, like you could leverage, leverage from uh, CloudFront, uh, but a apart from that, uh, additional benefit of using CloudFront is like when you attach WAF with CloudFront, the protection is at the perimeter of your uh, web application. So, as much as uh, this traffic will be avoided reaching out to the inner layers of your architecture, you're actually avoiding that much. Uh, overwhelming of uh, you know additional consumption of your inner uh, resources that's there in your architecture so that's mm. a very big advantage that you place cloud print uh, and attach a waf to it got it so I have those multiple layers that are in place there and you know kind of create you know those d different barriers of um of defense for the app that's right that's yeah. right you kind of even in the long in like a bigger picture i guess and correct me if I'm wrong with thinking like if you protect it at like an early layer, then like you just said, it stops getting to your later layer. So if you're using something where resources will be spun up based on usage, if things are not supposed to be being getting through, then it's obviously like gonna optimize because you're not wasting money on resources to point. Okay, awesome. I love the kind of bigger picture concept. I, I'm just gonna segue us to a quick um poll. So guys in the chat, need you to reply. Who looks at security costs as a spend? I'm intrigued to, to learn about how people are. Uh, so one for yes, two for no. Are you regularly checking your cost explorer or your care or your kudos for or your third party? No shit to third party. For how much you're spending on security tools? So we've got a couple of yes, a couple of no's because I feel like it's one of those services like CloudWatch maybe or CloudTrail people don't always look at a lot. So we've got a couple. I know people are. Every time I get my audience wrong, guys, you guys are always better than I anticipate. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have doubt. Um, but yeah, good. People are looking at it regularly, which is which is awesome. Okay, cool. So let's get into some optimization uh, bits. Let me take the poll down. Um, so if we want to move into diving into a little bit more of like how to optimize, you've already mentioned kind of ordering those 
rules to make sure that you're not going to be wasting or not, not wasting money but um not utilizing more rules and paying for them and them are there any other ways that we could optimize with it uh yes apart from uh you know having uh ordering the rules uh correctly there are like other things that customers could consider like uh, i mentioned challenge uh actions right uh Customers uh, could actually uh, leverage AWS uh, JavaScript SDKs to implement challenge actions. So when they, when they do that, it is uh, free of cost. And that uh, in today's uh, pricing, challenges are costed additionally when they use uh, from WAF. That's one of the things where customers could control cost. And another one, another one is like both is challenge and capture, right? When we configure it, we define uh, what we call as immunity time. Yeah, yeah. When uh, the end user successfully solves this kind of challenge, a token would be generated, uh, which will have kind of uh, what we call as fingerprint, so that it will have the end user's web browser information to identify it to be a legit web browser and not being a bot. So uh, when we configure that, you know, there is something that we define as an immunity time. You know, after a certain point of time, like it asks again to solve such kind of challenge to still uh, re-verify if it is still a legit uh, user. If this time is not configured properly, like uh, we might end up uh, overwhelming or overusing our capture and challenge kind of actions, which is uh, an additional uh, cost, right? So having that uh, immunity time configured optimally and as per your business requirement would actually definitely uh, help cost uh, have cost under uh, control i would say so so Latha, that, that you're saying that there's an sdk for waf where basically they folks can kind of integrate that in directly at the app level and only present those challenges and captchas you know for for kind of unauthenticated you know use cases where they, they haven't gotten the token and That's right. cut down on the amount of, of volume. That That is really cool. Um, yeah. Very cool, very cool. That's uh, an uh, added advantage for that um, is, uh, uh, you know, there are a couple of things that you will do on your web application, right? And when you add this along with that, it, it would also like uh, uh, reduce the latency that is uh, involved when you actually decouple these both uh, oh, as a cool. different functionalities, yeah. I'm like, the, John's asking all the right questions. That's why I brought him in today. <laughs> he knows he's doing well. Knowing all I'm, this I'm learning a lot too, Lava. This is this is great. You know, there's there's so many features like that. And I think that, um, you know, that SDK feature was was one that, you know, I wasn't really familiar with. And uh, it just kind of represents like that different model of like, hey, you know, take these cool capabilities, embed them in the application. You know, I wasn't aware of that uh, kind of latency benefit. That That is really cool and a great consideration to call it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, so is there any other, I think we've also talking about optimizing login costs. Was that something else you wanted to touch into? Uh, yeah, uh, to quickly uh, touch upon that, uh, of course, like we have a WAF and like, uh, we attach WAF to other services to protect them, right? And definitely we want visibility into what kind of traffic or what kind of uh, uh, web attacks our applications uh, uh, would be exposed to if we do not, or, or like, better strategize our defense mechanism, right? And we need uh, logging for that. So WAF has like three des uh, destinations or different kind of logging, so logging destination. First one is the CloudWatch logs. The second one is the Kinesis data firehose. And, and the third one is the S3 bucket. The optimization areas where uh, what I want to highlight is like, when customers use the Kinesis data firehose, it's very important that they choose uh, the buffer uh, uh, configuration so that they define the right amount of size and right uh, interval time for uh, the logs to be like uh, uh, to be uh, uh, for it uh, to be delivered to its dest uh, destination. Right. Uh, so if it is configured properly, uh, yeah, it does a, a job at required level. Make sure it, you do not like overuse it or overwhelm it. At the same time, like when customers use S3 as a uh, destination, directly using S3 would require uh, CloudWatch when it logs to push the data to S3. But when there is like 
billions of requests that WAF is executing, it's always the best idea to have Kinesis Data Firehouse pipe those logs to S3, and that would definitely uh, save a considerable amount, a considerable amount of charge for the logging. Awesome. Yeah, choosing the place to put your logs is a, a definite one we've, we've touched on a few times. So great call out because, yeah, no, having thinking about, again, we always want to draw awareness to where people can make those right decisions early on so that they can kind of configure for optimization in mind. Uh, I think last question probably, um, John, any tips to see security costs better? Any recommendations we can find stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you mentioned a couple of them earlier, Steph, around things like, uh, you know, the, the CID dashboards and looking at tools like Cost Explorer. Um, you know, always like to give a good shout out to the Cur Query Library, where folks can look at some of the queries that are set up there to reconcile those, those different pricing dimensions that Latha was talking about. So um, that way I can track the amount of requests that I have coming in. I can look at these different dimensions that maybe are scaling up with changes in the workload patterns and would then prompt me to do the things that uh, we just talked about here, where maybe I want to use the SDK or I want to, you know, um, redefine the scope that I have set up for any of the rules that are in place and use those to kind of balance out uh, the amount of requests that are actually being processed by the WAF. Um, so definitely Cur Query Library and then, you know, Cost Explorer, uh, always a, a great place to start. And then maybe one more budgets too, you know, always set up a budget so you can get some alerts and notifications in case those access patterns start to change for the apps. Love it. Oh, we've got to throw out the budget warning. Okay, great. All right. Thank you so much for, for going into that. I feel like John and I learned so much. We I feel like we sat quietly listening more than any yeah. other episode we've done. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, just like, keep talking, keep telling us. Um, okay, last like two bits. As a reminder, people have joined. Shout out. This is our last episode at this time frame. Just wanted to, before anybody panics. Uh, this is, so from next week, we're going to be starting at about this time, going for an hour. So as a last poll, guys, one or two, are you going to be joining? Or three, are you going to be joining? Yes, of course. Uh, come join us next week. Um, and we'll be doing a longer show with different elements. We're going to be making it a little bit more fun, a little bit more silly in some stuff. Uh, so, uh, But we are also going to keep our guest section. Um, so we're always going to be having half an hour with a guest and then the other half an hour with lots of different stuff. So yes, of course, people are coming. And yes, thank you guys. Um, twice for the fun. Love it. Uh, thank you so much, everybody uh, coming along. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rob showcasing twice on. Okay, Richard, we're ready for your summary. So Rich is going to throw up on the screen the final summary of the episodes we can run through. Arthur, thank you so much for coming on. Again, we've been really enjoying yeah, learning more you. about this topic. Um, okay, as this load... We're happy, we're happy to be here. <laughs> Okay, so it turned out costs for WAF, uh, group rules, uh, rules, groups, oh my god, rule groups rule the roost. <laughs> Get logging right to sleep like a dog. And it, I feel like he comes up with more creative ones every single time. So uh, thank you so much. Awesome. Okay, uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for one. Uh, Eric's already shy. A great summary. Uh, Eric loves yeah. it. Uh, as always, if you have any other follow-up questions, feel free to comment down below. If you watched all the way to the end, don't forget to like and subscribe to any channel you watch this on. And we'll be back next week to talk about pricing with Frank, who's going to be outside of AWS, so uh, somebody else coming in. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you all next week at our longer slot. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye.